Hey, what's up? Now, before any of you freak on me, <laughs> I know. Okay, yes, I do, I know. I know that I said that I wasn't going to put any dog tutorials on the open internet outside of my Skillshare. I know I said that. I remember saying that. Do you remember me saying that? Well, if you don't, you do know, right? <laughs> but I figured, you know what? Why not just one? Why not just like one little teaser, right? And if you like it, then definitely check out my Skillshare because I got a whole lot more dog drawing classes on there. Link to Skillshare in the description of this video. And yeah, who knows? Hopefully it'll help you out, especially if you like drawing dogs. Now, to the point, to this specific dog drawing. It's a puppy, you know, it's a cute little puppy. It's uh, fairly simple. Um, we're covering everything, right? From base layering with our soft charcoals. I'm gonna show you some really cool high value retrieval techniques with uh, our Mono Zero erasers. I'm going to be showing you the difference between implied lines and defined lines when it comes to ironing out the eyes and the nose of this specific pup. And to top it all off, I'm gonna show you a lot of really cool brush techniques. So, you know, there's not too many things in the world of art and especially independent artists where you'll get more commissions than you will pets, right? Cats, dogs, specifically. People love to commission pieces of their pets. And so if you can have that be an extensive part of your portfolio in the wake of your skill set, you're gonna be ahead of the curb, you know, when it comes to comparing yourself to uh, other artists, you know, your contemporaries, as it were. So, I've been talking, I've been talking, and I want to start drawing. So, let's draw a puppy. All right, so for this one, we're going to be using a graphite pencil and a hoo hoo eraser, a Pentel click eraser, and a mono zero eraser. Yes. We're also going to be using uh, a soft, a medium, and a hard rated charcoal pencil, along with a uh, sandpaper strip. and a uh, scratch piece of paper. I call this my tone check paper. We're also going to be using uh, three small smudgers, a number one, a number three, and a three sixteenths. And we're also going to be using two different brushes, my trusty number six, and then a uh, smaller diagonal cut elf brush. All right, so here we go. Let's draw this cute little puppy here. So the first step when you are looking at uh, your reference image of your dog or your puppy is to identify and draw out with your graphite pencil uh, the basic shape um, of that reference image. Um, shape by definition is uh, the outer contour uh, of an object. And this is how your viewer when they look at your drawing, will uh, first perceive it and um, begin to really make sense of, of the image as a whole. So the way I do it is when I look at my reference photo, um, I use a very light hand, right? A very light pressure control. And uh, I try to look at the, the value relationships that are inherent in the reference photo. Uh, say for example, when you look at the, the ear here that I'm drawing out, there is a definite difference 
between the kind of the clumps of the hair where the hair kind of come into bigger bigger pieces and then not only that but then there's a, um, a value difference um, between um, your higher values that you see in the ear and your lower values so when I look at the reference image those are the things that I'm trying to bring out in this initial step as far as detail goes I'm not worried about detail um, in this step because what I'm doing is I'm using my graphite pencil and I'm more or less uh, framing my drawing for the charcoal that's going to come later and then that is when I'll really um, do a bunch of really cool tricks with the you know, erasers and line work and, and bring out the, the detail that we'll see in this drawing at the end. But in this step, the big thing is just focus on the value relationships, right? Where are those high values? Where are those low values? How do they relate to each other? And those are where I'm going to want to use my graphite pencil and basically define them, bring them out. Let's see, like right here, for example, that's the corner of the eye. And then I'm just gonna draw out the eye. And for those of you who have been following uh, my tutorials uh, for a while now, uh, you know that when it comes to this step, um, it doesn't need to be perfect, um, not at all. And the reason why it doesn't need to be perfect is because we can make adjustments as we uh, move along, as, as we go forward. And uh, those adjustments are sometimes necessary to um, either rein in your proportions. Um, nine times out of 10, the reason why you need to erase and, and redraw something in your graphite step is because you want to make sure that your proportions are accurate. And then you see here, see how what I'm doing is I'm highlighting basically those breaks and those value relationships between high and low values. Because, and the reason why I'm doing it that way is because a high value is going to need less charcoal, right? And a low value is going to need more. So when you are in this step, drawing everything out and really laying down that basic shape that um, you see in your, in your reference photo, that is something to keep in mind while you're drawing out the outline of your drawing. You know, value relationships, it's, it's kind of its own, its own thing, but the, the short and the sweet of it is, is it's how your values correlate to each other. So like, say for example, you'll have a very low value immediately next to a very high value that in a nutshell is uh, what value relationship is. Okay, this is coming together pretty good. And then again, just like we did on uh, the left side of the puppy's face, we want to do that exact same thing. And then you see this point here from about the end of the nose up to about right here. When you look at the reference photo, that is going to mark kind of the edge of the right side of the eye. And then the bottom of this eye that we've already laid down, we bring it over and mark right about there. And that gives us a really nice framework for exactly where we can draw out this uh, puppy's right eye. And that's just a quick little trick that you can use. Those of you that have been following me for a while, you already know that I'm not the biggest fan of the grid method. Um, I have nothing against it. I just don't use it myself. Um, I like to use um, what I call reference points um, in my outline phase to help me kind of figure out exactly where my proportions are. I'm also not trying to draw anything quote unquote picture perfect, right? I'm not a fan of that. I just, I, I like to have fun. And for, for me, it's more about technique than it is about trying to get something uh, perfect. So I like to be foot loose and fancy free as they say. And here, same type of thing. I'm looking at the reference photo and just anywhere where that hair clumps, you know, that is, that is what I'm drawing out because those areas are gonna require more charcoal when it comes time for uh, our brushwork and 
and laying down uh, that charcoal for our base layering. I'm going to show you how to do that here in a little bit. Okay. We're not going to worry about form frame lines in this one because dogs are very soft, so it's going to be more brush work than it is smudger work. I got my tone check paper, and then here I've taken some soft charcoal and I've grinded it onto my sandpaper strip. Set that on my tone check there. Okay. Here I'm just going to grab my Mono Zero eraser real quick, and I'm just going to clean this up a bit. There we go. All right. So now, time to get serious. Time to get serious. Start moving some charcoal. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my number six brush. I've loaded it up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start laying down my base layer, right? But notice, notice here what I'm doing is I'm starting from the bottom, the bottom of the dog's paw. And then I'm going to work my way up. And the reason why I'm doing this, because if you look at the reference image, your lowest values are on the bottom of the paw, while your highest values are at the top. And that's just the way that the light is uh, hitting this uh, specific subject. Um, and then we can just pull up here, see that? Just pull up, pull up and over. A lot of the times when it comes to laying down your base layer of charcoal, two things to keep in mind with the brush light pressure control, right? Light like a fairy, very light. And then um, make sure you pull it in the same direction as the hair flows. Okay. So what I've done is I've taken a razor and I have a little box cutter and I've cut a diagonal on the tip of my Mono Zero eraser. And what that does is that just allows for when I'm going in like, like this here, this is what they call uh, retrieving high values. That's what I'm doing. I'm retrieving my high values here. Um, it just it just gives me more of a, it gives me a smaller line, right? There's less surface area on the tip of the of the eraser head. So when I strike the paper and retrieve that high value, you know, lift that charcoal, it just gives me a more refined strike. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's just a just a little quick trick that you can use to uh, just kind of really bring out. Um, the kind of the fineness of the hair. But then here, the big thing is um, just take your time and, and just refer to your reference photo. Um, when it comes to hair, really the only big trick that you need to know or remember when it comes to this step in your drawing is the length of your strike and the direction of your strike. So say, for example, a longer section of hair will require a longer strike, right? But the direction is the direction, so it doesn't matter if you're doing a small area or a big area, the direction is key. And then here I'm gonna take my smudger, I'm just gonna roll my my smudger head on here, I'm gonna check my tone, and now what I'm doing is I'm referring to the reference photo, and I'm starting again <laughs> at the bottom, and I am just more or less pinpointing where all of those lower values are. And what this is doing is this is more or less just uh, accentuating the, the, the value scale, right? Complete black to complete white. And then of course, you have all of your values um, in between those two. And this way, the whole spectrum is included, the whole black and white spectrum, or the monochromatic scale, as they call it. But here we are. So I'm just gonna take my brush, I've unloaded it, and now basically what I'm doing is I'm just, just very lightly hitting it. And what this is doing is this is giving me a form of gradation and it's softening up the look of uh, the fur. And you can go in like this if you want. Because the brush head has a diagonal cut in it, you're able to do things like this, see? You're able to go in and you're able to place lower values pretty much anywhere you want. But yeah, when it comes to retrieving high values, it's the length of the strike and the direction of the strike to keep in mind. All right, let's 
So I'm just taking my number six brush and fairly done with the paw here. But now I'm just gonna go in and I am looking at the reference photo and I'm just really focusing and building up any of those lower values that we see uh, in the dog's in the dog's ear. Now, even for higher values, you know, those of you that are looking at this and going, oh, you know, why are you going so dark with your charcoal? That's a really, that's going to be a really, really high value. Well, yes, yes, it is. But here's, here's kind of the, the trick when it comes to laying down your base layer with uh, the three layered method like this is even in areas, when, especially when it comes to dogs or any animal that's very soft and furry, even if there are sections of the dog's face or say like the, in this instance this puppy's ears where the values are high you still want to lay down a fairly decent amount of charcoal like this with your brushwork on your base layer because now we're going to go in with our mono zero eraser and we're going to start retrieving those high values and really bringing out the texture of that hair because if you don't lay down enough charcoal and then you go to retrieve, what you'll find is, is in between your eraser strikes, right? Where you have those high value streaks. Um, it's not gonna be nearly, they're not gonna be nearly as defined. And the reason why they're not gonna be nearly as defined is because you didn't lay down enough charcoal, right? And you see this, you see how your eraser tip can pick up kind of that gunk. Just go ahead and hit it with your razor and you gotta have a nice clean cut. And then that way, when you go back and continue to retrieve your high values, you'll have really thin strikes. Yeah, just like this. Bear in mind, I am going extremely quickly, um, but that's only because if this was a commission piece, say for a client of mine, I would probably sit in the chair for anywhere from 12 to 14 hours. But obviously, no one's gonna sit through a tutorial that takes 12 to 14 hours. So the best that I can do is um, principally show you my approach and explain to you my thought process as to why I do things the way that I do. And if you can take those, uh, if you can take those principles and apply them to your own drawings, then that's all you need to do. But, you know, it's important to remember that, you know, what we did with the graphite pencil was the shape, right? It was that two dimensionality of the drawing and what we're doing here by um, bringing in the values and working on the shadows to help basically we're, we're, we're bringing the object form and context and space so that we can fully identify it or so that your viewer can fully identify it you know form is three-dimensional which is what we're bringing out here. We're bringing out that through that, that three-dimensional form versus shape. That is only ever going to be two-dimensional. So this is kind of the evolution of the drawing from two-dimensional space to three-dimensional space. Now, granted, you know, your drawing is only ever going to be in two-dimensional space, but it's your job as the artist to know how to utilize your values and to bring out that that form and really sell the viewer on the fact that your drawing is three-dimensional, right? You might hear people say, oh, wow, I feel like I could reach out and actually touch it, you know, in regards to your drawing. And, and that's that's what you want. You know, that's that's the kind of aesthetic that you want to be able to, to convey in your drawings. And uh, the three-layered method, which is this method um, that I use, I can definitely help you achieve that. But as you can see, with uh, 
with the smudger and, and the brushwork and, and the eraser work, it's it's all cohesive. So much of the time in drawing, it's it's just knowing how to do something. You know, what's the process look like? And if you can iron out the process and you or or the approach, then you'll you'll be very successful in your drawing. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking my number one smudger and I, I grab my number one just because I want a little bit more control. You know, the head on this number one smudger is slightly smaller than the number three that I've been using up until this point. And this is kind of cool because what you can do is you can go in and you can really uh, kind of accentuate it and bring out those value relationships between your high values and your uh, low values. I remember how I was talking about the texture um, of the hair that we see in this specific drawing, how, how it's clumpy, how when the hair clumps together, you tend to get these strands of hair. Well, utilizing your smudger like this will definitely help you achieve that look. And then here what I'm doing is I'm taking my elf brush and I'm just loading it up. And I'm going through and I'm just more or less blending uh, the hair here. And notice it's accomplishing a couple couple things. It's lowering the value and it's also softening up the texture. No matter what kind of hair it is, whether it's on a dog or a human, hair is always going to be soft. Most all the time it's going to be soft. Um, the texture might vary a little bit on exactly what kind of hair it is, but hair in general is going to have a soft look. Okay, so now here what I'm doing, this is the part where you need to be a little, this can be a little dicey, okay? Because what I'm doing is I'm taking a hard charcoal, and the reason why I'm using a hard charcoal is because hard charcoal has the most amount of binder in it. And because of that, what I'm able to achieve are very, very sharp lines. Sharp lines, and they have a very, very thin line quality. Now. I don't think I've talked about line quality yet, but line quality is essentially the thickness or thinness of a line. And by varying uh, the line quality, you can show form in a drawing with just the use of that specific line. But you can also overdo it, right? At the end of the day, when you look at the reference photo, I mean, how many lines do you see in the hair, in this section of, of the drawing? Not a lot, right? You only see a little bit, a little here and a little there. Um, some of you have heard me say in the past that less is more, right? Well, when it comes to this specific step with the hard charcoal and kind of defining the hair of your dog's ear, that is very much in play here. Less is more. Just when you're looking at your reference photo, Try to iron out exactly where you need lines such as this with your hard charcoal. And just try not to overdo it, okay? And, and the other thing about hard charcoal is it tends to have a fairly light line weight. Now, line weight is used to describe the strength of a line, or rather how light or dark it appears on paper, right? So when it comes to hard charcoal, the line quality tends to be thinner and your line weight tends to be a little lighter. And that's just because there's a ton of binder in the charcoal. So there's actually less charcoal that's hitting the paper than there is with say medium and soft charcoal. Why? Because medium and soft charcoals have less and less binder in them. So the effect that you get onto the paper is the exact opposite of what you get with hard charcoal. So just keep that in mind, okay? All right, so now here's another cool thing that you can do. Now what we're doing is we're taking our, our smudger and we're more or less blending a lot of those different lines, not all of them, but we're, we're blending lines here and we're blending lines there that we just laid down with our hard charcoal and you see what that does, that kind of softens it up, but at the same time, it still also keeps kind of those clumps of fur intact. 
And then what you can do is if you want a little bit more refined look, you can go back in with your mono zero eraser and continue to uh, retrieve uh, those higher values. And this this will um, just continue to um, give you uh, more and more texture. It's a little dirty tip. I'll just clean it up real quick. Tr try to clean it with the, with with your nail. Try not to try not to touch the tip of your eraser with your with your f actual finger too much because then you'll get oil on the eraser tip and then the oil will hit the paper and charcoal loves the oil from your hands. So <laughs> just be aware of that. Okay, it's coming together pretty nice. So now I'm gonna take my elf brush. I'm just gonna load up here. And I'm just going to lay down some some lower values here. Try to bring out, bring out those lower values. But when you're when you're bringing out your lower values, just just do a little at a time, little at a time, little at a time. Don't go in there and like load up your brush like a ton and then throw that down because that that'll just destroy everything that you just did. Remember, we we want to be subtle, you know, little at a time, one step at a time. Okay, so now. I'm going to swap out my elf brush for my number six brush. I'm just going to load it up here. And we are going to start laying down the base layer for around the puppy's eye here. Real light, real light, because if you look at the reference photo, we're going to be doing a lot of high value retrieval in this section uh, of this drawing. So. Just nice and light, get a nice base layer. And remember, just like with the uh, puppy's paw, what we did is you know, when we were laying down our base layer, we also remembered to, to pull that charcoal in the wake of our strikes with our brush, uh, relative, re re relatively in the same direction as our high value retrievals will flow across the paper. And that's, that's just a, a subtle thing. You don't necessarily have to do that if you don't want to, but it is good practice because by, by practicing the flow of your subject, even with your base layering, what you're doing is you're solidifying that in your mind for when it comes time to grab your Mono Zero Eraser and start doing this. Start retrieving those high values you're basically memorizing exactly how your subject flows on the paper. Okay. When it comes to this step, it's it's always a really good practice to just uh, just take your time, do a little bit here, do a little bit there, and notice, notice, the more time you spend retrieving your high values in one area, the overall higher in value that that specific area will look to um, your viewer's eye. So, just keep that in mind. Like say, for example, you see um, the low value on the forehead, on the right side of the forehead of this pup, right here. See how it's just real quick, just kind of one, two, three, four, five, six, and then, I, and then I'm moving on. But then like anywhere where I need it to be slightly higher, I'm doing a lot more strikes than that, right? So it's just, it's, it's, it's subtleties in hand pressure and, uh, and duration of time spent on a specific area that'll really uh, dictate exactly what kind of a value you end up conveying uh, onto the paper. So just keep that, keep that in mind. Something just like that. There we go. 
Okay, now we're just gonna unload. That's what we're doing here. We're unloading our brush, just twirling it around and then tapping it. There's hardly any charcoal to fall onto my brush, but I'm just gonna hit this real light. Just real lightly. Just, this is more for gradation effect and just trying to get all of that eraser residue that's left over from uh, retrieving my high values. Now we're gonna load up our elf brush. We're gonna go right in here. We're just gonna dab the paper, just like this. Just gonna dab it, just push it. I'm gonna kind of push the charcoal in. And then once it's pushed in, we're gonna flip our brush like this and then pull this way. Just pull it this way. There we go. And, and that just helps with, um, with the flow, right? With the flow of the charcoal, with the flow of the, of the puppy's fur. And it's lowering the, the value as well. You see how it's very much, it's just very much a layering process. That's, that's all the three layered method is, is just very much a layering process. Just layer upon layer upon layer. The big question if you're new to it is just how exactly, right? How exactly is it done? And that's why, that's why I make these tutorials for you guys. So that there's no question how it's done, right? Okay. Now the cool thing about the elf brush here too is because it's smaller than um, the number six brush, it really allows us to kind of pinpoint exactly where we want to lay down those, those lower values. And notice how we're able to lay down those lower values while at the same time still being able to uh, maintain uh, a lot of that texture when we uh, retrieved our high values with our mono zero eraser, right? And you just take your brush and just kind of dab the paper like this. Just like this, I'm just pushing. A couple pushes here, a couple pushes there. I'm just bringing, bringing out that, that low value and working on this blend. Okay, so now I take my number one smudger. And the reason why I'm grabbing my smudger for this instead of the brush like what I was doing is because now I need I need my my charcoal to be a little bit more refined as far as exactly where that low value is because it's right around the eyes. So I want to have more control when it comes to any kind of work that you'll do, uh, regardless of, uh, of value, you, you definitely want to have more control when it comes to the eyes. You know, the eyes are uh, the soul of any subject. And so we want to make sure that if we nail anything in the drawing, especially when it comes to dogs, there's, there's three things that you need to, that you need to really nail with every dog portrait that you do. The first one is the left eye, the second is the right eye, and the third is the nose. If you can nail those three things, nine times out of 10, you're gonna have a very, very happy client. So just keep that in mind. But now what I'm doing here is I'm just taking my model's eraser and I'm just cleaning this all up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a medium charcoal I'm going to go in, I'm going to establish a nice defined line right here. Now a defined line it occurs when you continue a line without any break. And uh, typically they have a mid to uh, heavy uh, line weight. Then we got this part of the eye here. I'm just going to go through and Kind of punch in some of these some of these lower values and I got the little little tear duct right there bring that out as well that's looking good looking good okay so now what I'm doing is I'm switching it up for my graphite and uh, this is just kind of the best practice I like to go in with my graphite pencil first and I like to kind of establish exactly where those low values are and um, in this way, I, I give myself a nice little framework um, that, uh, that I can work with. 
So now I'm going to take my, my medium charcoal and I'm going to start building up all of my super low values. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why aren't you using a soft charcoal? Isn't that even lower in value because there's less binder in it? It's like, yes, you're right, but almost to a fault. Here, I'm just going to take a little 3 16th size smudger because it's my smallest one in my arsenal. I'm just going to establish some, some mid values here, kind of throughout the, the reflection in the eye. There we go, that looks good. Okay, but getting back to what I was saying. So I'm using a medium charcoal because the medium charcoal is like the Goldilocks. And, at, and of the two, of the soft and the medium, when it comes to detail work in the eyes and the nose, I prefer medium. The reason why I prefer medium is because there's still enough binder in it to where, see how this kind of all this detail work that I'm able to, to lay down in the reflection of this puppy's eye? There's still enough binder in the pencil to where it holds a tip very nicely. Where if I was to try to do this with a soft charcoal, even if it was super sharp, a couple things would happen. My tips would break. Even with soft pressure control, they'd still snap off. And then not only that, but they would try to scatter. Once it was on the paper, it wouldn't hold its integrity. It would just, it would just fluff off and all, and all across the paper. So that's why I use a medium charcoal. Then here, I'm just gonna take my elf brush and just kind of dab that up, soften that up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my hard charcoal and I'm gonna just kind of establish, establish this line here. Nice little implied line, like it's not, it's not defined. It's like it's kind of there, but it's so soft that you don't really see a line per se. You just see a break between medium value and then extremely high value. Now here, here's a soft charcoal. Now I'm using a soft charcoal here and I'm gonna establish all of this super low value immediately around the eye. But the reason why I'm using a soft charcoal here is because I need this to be able to spread evenly into the paper when I go to hit it with my smudgers. See? Now, if I, if I was on the inside of the eye, the tear duct, I wouldn't use this because its integrity wouldn't hold up because it doesn't have enough binder in it to do so. Now you can do this with either a smudger or a brush. That is personal preference. I can use either. I absolutely love this brush. Ever since I started using it, I haven't been able to stop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and Hit this real quick with the brush and see how that kind of blended and softened everything up real nice for us. That's what we want. That's what we want. Okay, I'm just going to load this up a little bit. And I'm going to continue to dab along this, uh, along the ear here. Lower this value. Okay. It's looking good. I'm just gonna load up again. And then kind of reestablish where this where this low value is here. And that's the cool thing about this method is if you need to go back and continue to lower your values, uh, you can do that, you know, as your drawing matures. Okay, sweet. All right, so now the high value retrieval time. So just gonna go back in through here, just like we did before. And we're just gonna continue to uh, retrieve a lot of these uh, higher values and bring out the texture, that furry, fluffy texture that we see in the reference photo. Tip got got kind of worn, so I took it off camera and sharpened it with my razor. And then I'm going back through.
all the while I'm just keeping an extreme focus to exactly how my strikes flow and I'm ensuring that they match my reference photo. And you don't have to get every single little hair right. You just, you just have to get the basic flow down. If you can nail the basic flow of how the hair goes across your puppy's face, that'll be, a, that'll be a good enough. Trust me. Okay. And then here, what you can do is you can take a hard charcoal and you can kind of throw in um, some more texture around the eye if, if you wish. Like here, for example, if you look at the reference photo, there's kind of a, there's a little bit more hair here. So you can go ahead and solidify that with a couple small defined lines. And then here, just, we're just gonna check and make sure that we got the right, right tone. And what we're gonna do is just very lightly, very lightly, just kind of go and like swirls a little bit here, a little there. And if you look at the reference photo, we're just establishing some little blood vessels. And that's it. And now we're just gonna unload our brush. Very lightly, very lightly. Just a couple of passes, a couple quick passes and kind of soften, soften all this texture up. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my medium charcoal here and I'm just gonna go like this. I'm just gonna kind of have some very short strikes to the paper. And this helps to, to blend that texture from you know, your higher values right into your, your low values. And then sit it with a brush real quick. Just pull it like this. Just like that. That's all you need to do. And we're just gonna load up our elf brush here. And then I'm just looking at my looking at my reference photo and just dressing up some low value. Okay. So now I'm gonna take my number six and we are moving on to bigger and better things here. So notice the direction again. See how the hair flows on this part of, of the reference photo? Just doing the exact same thing that we did on the paw, the ear, and uh, the right side of the face. Again, we're being uh, cautious, and uh, we are just be going very light, very lightly, but still not being afraid of laying down a like a solid base, right? Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my smudger just because I want a little bit more control here and the smudger is gonna allow me to really, really punch in this uh, slight opening of the dog's mouth here. Remember, smudgers give you more control than, than your brushes do, so just keep that in mind. You know, if you get into a tighter space or you really need to um, have a little bit more uh, definition to a lower value area, just grab your smudger over your brush. You'll thank yourself. Okay. So now, model zero time. I'm just going to go in, we're going to be conscious of our uh, strike length and our strike direction. There we go. That's coming out. Real nice. Wonderful. And it's that easy. It is really that easy, guys. I just have fun with it. Have fun with it. That's, that's the biggest thing in drawing 
He's, you know, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. There we go. That's looking good. But can you see now why I didn't do form frame lines in the uh, initial steps? The reason why is because, you know, dogs are more about more about texture than they are anything else. Their texture tells the story of their form, right? Where say with like a shark, for example, a shark doesn't have hardly any texture, you know, in, you know, in regards to like say a dog, right? And so you'd want to have form frame lines so that you could really um, make sure that you nail your, your form. But with dogs, the texture basically leads the way to the form to the underlying form. So all you really need to worry about is just what does your texture look like? Yeah. You know? Okay, we're gonna unload our brush here. I'm just gonna blend this, blend this out. Real light, this is more just to kind of get, get all that eraser gunk off of the paper. And then here I'm gonna take my medium charcoal and I just wanna kinda Kind of define the the mouth here. Put a define line right there, and then kind of punch this in with uh, with some medium charcoal and lower that value. There we are. And then here, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to put a define line right here. I'm just going to run this line down. Sweet. Okay, and essentially what that's done is that's kind of, it's kind of pushed that side of the dog's face back a little bit, and it's made that ear look like it's kind of hanging right next to the, right next to the face, which is what we want. And then we're just gonna kind of sock this in a little bit. And see what we've done. You notice how, how much lower in value all of this charcoal is that I'm laying down with the medium charcoal. Well, what this is doing is this is, you know, kind of like what I was speaking to you before, this is accentuating that value scale, right? Complete white, complete black. And so what it's doing is it's really going to make our drawing pop, right? Because we're, we're using every bit of that value scale every bit of that value scale. Okay, on this out a little bit. I'm just kind of dabbing the paper here. If you want a lower value when it comes to your brushwork, dabbing will lower that value a lot more than swiping it will. So just kind of keep that in mind. I mean, value basically, you know, I mean, it, simply put, value means how light or dark something is, right? I mean, a drawing is said to be a value drawing when it is in black and white, um, when it has no color, you know, that mono, monochromatic. And black, white, and the many shades of gray in between the two um, are called uh, values, and sometimes tones. And value is very, very important because the value is what allows us to see form like what I was mentioning before. But see here, what we're doing is I'm just going through with my brush because it's a little smaller than my number six and I'm laying down that, that base layer. And then I'm just taking my medium charcoal and I'm putting in a defined line here for the nostril of this pup. And uh, it's just more or less bringing out that, that form of the nose. And then I'm just gonna lift up while I conclude that line. See that? Establish another line here, and then just lift up. And then the, the center line. And I'll pull this define line up there. And then same thing on this side, just over and up. Okay, now I'm just gonna fill in these, these nostrils. I'm gonna lower that value. 
dog noses can be tricky if you're not used to them. So, but this is how I do it. Seems to work. Okay. But you're gonna be blown away at all the different tools that we're gonna use for this dog's nose. So we've already used our brush. We've already used our charcoal pencil. And now we're gonna use our number one smudger. I'm just gonna start from the line. Start from that defined line. I'm just gonna start from the line and then kind of work my way up. Just like this. Just like this. And see what starts to happen. See how that form is starting to be conveyed, that roundness. It's that simple. It's that simple. Start from the line and then just work your way up. There we go, it's starting to come together real nice. And here I'm just gonna pull this up over like that. And this is establishing the kind of the top, the top of that dog's nose. And then when you have your smudger, you can start going in and, and putting in like little spots in the fur and stuff like we see here and here with, uh, with your um, smudgers as well. Okay. It's coming together real nice. And then like down here, you see how that kind of texture is? This is kind of how we convey those. Just kind of pull down one way. You get a real nice texture. And then you can just run your smudger right along the bottom. Then here what I'm doing is I'm taking my elf brush and I'm just dabbing the paper and see what uh, this effect does is this gives us that gradation and it you know blends those those values together and gives us a very very nice you know soft look onto the paper. Brushes are absolutely amazing. I mean, if you don't use brushes or if you've never thought about drawing with them, when it, especially when it comes to the charcoal medium, definitely, definitely give it a try. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. And then here what I'm doing is I'm just dabbing uh, the brush along the bottom. And this kind of, this just kind of establishes the, the boundary of, uh, of the dog's muzzle here. Then the ahuhu, what I'm doing is I'm taking this and and with this step, just be very, very, very light-handed. Like as you touch the paper, like literally as you start to touch it, just lift up and more or less skip across the paper. If these if these pores that you're putting into uh, your dog's nose look a little big, don't worry about that because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and hit this with a brush and some smudger work and we're gonna go and we're gonna outline a lot of these different pores with um, you know, with medium charcoals and, uh, and really bring out that, uh, that texture. Okay. So now I'm just taking my smudger and I'm just kind of blending and softening up some of these, uh, some of these areas. Okay. So just like this, just nice, nice tight little circles. And if you actually look at the reference photo for the nose in this area specifically, you can kind of see that, you know, the shadow that, that we're going for. This is how you, this is how you achieve that. Wonderful. And just, just bear in mind though, like, you know, you don't want to overwork the, the nose, but uh, like, and then here, what we're doing is this is a medium charcoal and I'm just, I'm just doing nice, nice tight little, little circles. Just like this, 
Let's see, maybe if you see this a little better here. See that? That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing, just, just like that. And I'm trying to basically put them right on top of all of those high values that I just retrieved with my Ahuhu eraser. And, uh, and it gives me a really nice, a really nice texture, you know, kind of that rough, porous texture that we see um, on dog noses. So, okay, that's looking pretty good. And then here, you can also, you know, strike the paper and you can, you can establish, you know, kind of where certain bodies of, of fur um, end. There we go. And then once you've done that, you can go with the three sixteenths and just kind of kind of blend it all so you kind of take that grittiness away. Now we're just going in with our Mono Zero Eraser. Just kind of doing some high value retrieval here real quick. Just kind of softening that up with our brush. And then we're doing the same thing on the nose here. Just kind of blending it. And I'm just hitting the paper anywhere where I don't want that greediness to show through with uh, the medium charcoal. Just want to blend. Okay, and then this top line here, I'm just gonna take my medium charcoal. I'm just gonna, just gonna kind of bring it out a little, little bit more, make it a little bit more defined. And then what this will do is this will this will give that nose some definite form. There we go. That looks good. All right. So looking back to looking back to my texture in this specific area of the drawing, I'm just going to go back through and just do some high value retrieval. Okay, and then and then down along the bottom here is where I'm gonna I'm just gonna pull it just like this from top to bottom. Just pull it. I'm just kind of run my eraser through those areas that I hit with the smudger before. Okay. Kind of redefine this a little bit, and this is um, this is what I was talking about with you know not worrying about your graphite outline being uh, perfect because just like this, we can go through, and this is what I call resetting. You know, you can reset throughout your drawing process, um, especially with this specific method. And that's what it's all about. It's all about resetting if need be, you know, making your proportions uh, more accurate to your reference image. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm just taking my number six brush and I'm just going through and I'm starting to lay down my base layer. And that's another trick that you can do too when it comes to the base layer is if you want to, you can just focus on where your low values are and really build those low values first. And then your higher values will, will kind of take care of themselves if, if you do that. So just going through and just laying that all down. Okay. And now just like what we did before, on the left side of the, of the puppy's face, we're doing that exact same thing on the right side of the puppy's face. All the while being conscious of our eraser strikes, their length, 
and the amount of time that we spend in a specific area. So like say up here where the value is extremely low, you know, just a couple strikes, just a couple pulls, just boom, 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 move on. And then in areas, like say down here, where it needs to be a higher value, right? It needs to be lighter in nature. You can spend a little bit more time in that specific area. There we go. Okay. So now here, we're just going to unload our number six brush. Just very lightly hit this. Just kind of blend it all together, get rid of that eraser gunk left over from retrieving our high values. Now we're just going to go in here with our 3 16th smudger and I'm just going to just going to blend this line a little bit, soften it up so that it's not so gritty. And here I got a couple of places in the eye that I just need to blend a little bit. And then I just need to define these spots in the fur a little bit more. There we go. All right. So now I've got my medium charcoal. Just like before, I'm taking it and I'm defining, defining the line. You know, this drawing doesn't have too many defined lines in it, but especially when it comes to dogs, most all dogs, the only real defined lines that you're gonna have might be in the mouth, the nose, and the, and the, and the eyes. But everything else will be fairly soft, just because dogs are soft by nature. So just keep that in mind. And then here, as I'm looking at the reference image, there is some low value immediately above the eye. So I just want to establish that with my medium charcoal. Just kind of double line the top there. There we are. And then just like before, I'm going to take my graphite pencil. I'm going to refer to the reference image and I'm just kind of establishing kind of the basic shape, the reflection that we see. And then this is going to allow me to go in with my medium charcoal and just start kind of establishing those super low values. But then here I'm just taking my 3 16 smudger, just kind of blending the top of this and the bottom. And then here what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish the end of the, the dog's face. Because unlike the left side of the dog's face, this other ear is actually a little bit farther back to where the eye is actually closer to the viewer than the ear is. So this is how we're going to convey that. Okay, this is coming together somewhat. Then here I'm just gonna take my 3 16 smudger. It's my smallest one, gives me the most control. And I'm just gonna go ahead and punch in all of my middle of the road values. There we are. And now I've swapped that out for my medium charcoal. Principally, everything that I'm doing to this eye is the exact same as the first eye, okay? There we go. Remember with eyes, get in, get out. Just, just don't spend too much time on the eyes because you'll risk overworking the eyes. And if that happens, you're, you're not gonna be happy with yourself. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. There we go. Okay, now I'm, uh, again, just like with the first time, I'm taking my hard charcoal. And I'm placing a nice implied line right there. Okay, I'm just gonna unload it real quick. I'm just gonna unload it. I'm just gonna dab the paper real light just a couple times. Just a couple times. Boom, boom. Okay, 
All right, so now I'm gonna load up. And I'm gonna just start uh, layering and building up some of these uh, areas of the dog's face where that value needs to be a little lower. Okay, just like this, you just pull your brush Pull it, dab it, and it really establishes those low values for you. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my Mono Zero Eraser, I'm just gonna hit this a couple times, short and sweet. And the more you do this, the, the better you'll get at it. I know this, uh, this method can seem kinda Kind of intense at first, but trust me, it's it's super easy. It's actually probably one of the easier methods that you can uh, use when it comes to drawing dogs, especially anything that's furry. Okay, all right. So now I'm gonna go back to my elf brush, and I'm just gonna go for, start from the line. I'm just gonna pull. See that? Just gonna pull. Again, I am being sure to be extremely light here, extremely light-handed, because I want to be able to go back through and uh, retrieve, you know, my higher values with my with my Mono Zero eraser. So, but notice the clumps, the clumps of hair where where there's a lot of hair together, and they and they showcase those strands, that's where I want to pull my brush. And that's kind of what I was getting at during the uh, graphite phase where we were just drawing the, the basic shape of, of the puppy and of the ears is, you know, where, where that hair clumps together, you draw, you basically draw out the outline of that and then that's where you lay down your, your charcoal so that you can go ahead and retrieve it with your monozer eraser. And you can really sell that hairy look on, on this dog's ears. Okay, and then just like this, just gonna start pulling, let's just start retrieving. Now these poles, notice these poles are much longer, right? They're not they're not short little throws like on the, the face of, of the pup. They're longer because that's just the nature of the texture in the ears that we see in this uh, specific reference photo, so. And then here, if you want to use your smudger and you want, kind of want to push back, see how I'm pushing the head back by doing that? And that's how you do that. And then we can't forget about the blood vessels and the pup side, just like this. Just like that. Boom, that's it. Okay, and then here I'm gonna take a hard charcoal because if you look at the reference photo, we do have some 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 fuzzies, some hair. So this is how we convey those. And the hard charcoal is your friend for detail work, guys. Remember what I said earlier? Normally I'll take 12 to 14 hours worth of chair time on a commission piece. I can't do that in these tutorials. So the best I can do is, is speak to it. And and basically your hard charcoal is your detail charcoal that's that's going to be the charcoal that you want to use for like your whiskers uh moles um you know anything that um your dog has where it requires a more refined look right a more refined approach you're going to want to use your hard charcoal for that okay and then here what i'm doing is i've swapped out that uh, that hard charcoal for uh, charcoal that has a little less binder in it, you know, in my medium charcoal. And I'm just, uh, just kind of pulling it. I'm just putting that right up against the line and then I'm taking my brush and I'm just pulling it. Just pulling it. I'm dabbing, I dab it, and then I pull it. Okay. And here I'm taking my medium charcoal and I'm just kind of pushing up 
and establishing that boundary a little bit more. Here I got a whole bunch of runaway charcoal, so I'm taking my pen tool, click eraser. And this is why I love this thing, man. It's like a leaf blower. It just moves a bunch of charcoal very quickly for me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my elf brush and I'm just going to unload it real quick. I'm just going to kind of soften this up. Okay. So now I'm going to take my smudger, my number one. I'm just going to pull and just like on the other side, I'm just, I'm really going to go in and this is where I'm going to establish um, where a lot of that hair sits and exactly just how it sits, right? Just like that. And then I'm going to take my Mono Zero Eraser. I'm going to retrieve my high values. Really bring out a lot of that fur. Just soften it up with my number six. There we go. Okay. I'm just gonna load this up. Start at the bottom. Start at the bottom. Then work your way up. See that? Just like that. Okay. And then just like we did on the other side, this fur here requires uh, shorter shorter strikes shorter strikes the importance of the direction doesn't change but the length of your strikes does remember how when we were retrieving high values with the dog's ear how long those strikes were this is the exact opposite and that's just because the reference photo dictates that okay it's looking pretty good it's starting to look like a puppy Okay, so now I'm going to unload my number six brush. I'm just going to hit this real light. Okay. So now I'm just going to take my number one smudger. And I'm just going to kind of bring out this these lower values here. And then check this out. See this? You go just like this, and this is how you can kind of establish those boundaries and uh, kind of those discrepancies that you see in the fur as far as like, you know, you know the color of, uh, of your pup, so. Okay, so now I'm just going to load up my number six brush here, and I am going to lay down my base layer for the other paw. And check this out, see this? See how if you wanna spend more time in a specific area, how you can kinda lay down the beginnings of those value relationships that we see. And then just like this, stab the paper, and stab it, and you can swipe it. Okay, so now I'm just going in with my Mono Zero Eraser. Just kind of bringing out and defining the, the top of the paw. All right, and then I'm just doing my high value retrievals. Again, I'm being conscious of exactly how and where this fur lays. As you can see the, the fur does lay in different directions, but as long as we're conscious of it, that's all that, uh, that's all we really need to do. Okay. I got about five minutes left in this one, so I'm gonna try to bring out as much detail as I can in that amount of time. But here again, just going to focus on bringing out those those low values. Most of the time on these paws, with the way the, the light's hitting it, that those lower values are going to be on the bottom. All right. Okay. 
but it's absolutely amazing what you're able to accomplish with uh, with simple smudgers with this technique. A lot of it is just the direction that you pull. Okay, so now here, if you look at the reference photo, we do have a pretty low value, and I want to kind of bring this out because what this does is this kind of pushes that paw back just just ever so slightly. It really speaks to the form of uh, this specific drawing. Okay, then in here, I'm going to use my hard charcoal. And I'm just going to go in, I'm just going to bring out some more, some more texture um, in, in the fur. Because as wonderful as retrieving high values with your Model Zero Eraser is, um, you can also do a lot with your hard charcoal. And then here, what I'm doing is I'm just placing it on the paper and then lifting up and then I'm pulling as I, as I strike the paper and I pull, I lift. And what that does is that gives me a really nice, sharp, thin conclusion to my whiskers. A lot of artists kind of scoff at, at doing whiskers this way, but it's a super quick, easy way and it matches the aesthetic of the three-layered method, so. The last thing you should be stressing out about is whiskers of all things when it comes to your dogs. Just do it like this. It's super quick, it's super easy, looks good. And that way you can move on. And then here what I'm doing is I'm taking my brush and I'm just more or less dabbing the paper. What this is doing, believe it or not, is this is kinda, you can't really see, you can barely see it in the reference photo, but there is some form to the, the muzzle of this dog. And this is how you, you uh, can achieve that. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm taking my number six brush and I'm just gonna go right along, right along the edge here. And I'm gonna kind of establish kind of the shadow. Cause this dog, after all, he is laying down on the ground so we want to kind of sell that look to the viewer. There we are. It's looking good. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Then my elf brush, I'm just gonna... Just focusing on different values, lower values. And then here's kind of a cool trick is you can take your smudger like this. See this? Look at this. Oh, just like that. Because if you look at the reference photo, there is, you know, a lot of kind of some hair here. There's some hair there. There's, you know, just put it on its side and then just pull it. Kind of like this. See this? Just like that. A lot of these tricks, what they're designed to do is they're designed to enable you to draw um, very quickly. And in the art world, the faster you can do something, nine times out of 10, that's a good thing. You know, you don't wanna spend you know a month on a drawing, not that there's anything wrong with that, but if you're looking to monetize yourself or maybe you're you know, you want to put out a lot of high quality drawings very quickly, then this is a, a very good uh, method to be able to do that. Just kind of cleaning this up a little bit here, a little bit there. This is actually fairly, let's bring this down a little bit. There we go. That's looking pretty good. But that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Um, remember, I am on Skillshare. So yeah, if you enjoyed this tutorial, definitely check out my Skillshare. I have a handful of different classes that focus on specific breeds of dogs. Again, I'll have a link to my Skillshare in the description of this video. I'm also on Patreon as well. I have a three different tiers set up. For $2 a month, you get to participate in monthly poll voting that I do for $5 a month, you get early access to all of my YouTube videos, and for $10 a month, you get monthly drawing consultations from yours truly, me. So I hope this drawing helped, and good luck in your future drawings.